Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Len Jackson, and we present the Frankie Howard Variety Show with Frankie's special guests Anita Harris, George Roper, Aidan J. Harvey, and Bill McGuffey, with music by the Max Harris Orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's not often that you're privileged to see a star of magnitude and brilliance, verve and quality, grace and dynamism, and tonight is no exception because I've got to go off. <laughs> All I ever get to do is the announcements. It's a shame, really, because I've got a great act. I sing, I dance, I juggle, and... I'll juggle you if you don't get on with it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the other star of our show, Frankie Howard. started yet <laughs> oh dear let me catch my breath i'm sorry about this panting oh excuse my pants now no it's only a little one now what no not yet no 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 not yet no no now i'm in a terrible state i honestly i don't know whether i'm coming or going i, I tell you something i wish i was going now i'll no, listen please please i must have shush please i will have shush now are there any tourists here tonight any foreigners did you, anyone pay to get in? Now, now I'll tell you why. Now, I'll tell you why, because you've been conned. Some people here tonight, but foreigners, have been conned. But no, was it, no, but I'll tell you something. When I arrived here tonight at the theatre, I was amazed at the size of the queue. I was amazed. I thought, all this for poor little me. It warmed the cockles of my heart. I had braised cockles. <laughs> Oh, I love braised cockles. There were tears in my eyes as I gazed at my enormous following. I hadn't seen such a long queue, or at least not to see me, since I worked in the unemployment benefit office. <laughs> <laughs> but when I got to the front of the line, who was there? Upstairs, you saw him the way into the doorman. The Incredible Hulk, you saw him. <laughs> you said, get to the back of the queue, go on. I said, do you know who you're addressing? He said, yes, the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> he grabbed me coats. I didn't, I didn't want to split hairs, so I thought, well, he was over six foot tall. And Queen of Sheba wasn't a bad answer, you know, for an ad lib. <laughs> so he said, you can't get in without a ticket, sunshine. Yeah, I said, don't you sunshine me, you rainy interval. Because I'm all brusque. I was brusque. Anyway, outside, this spiffy character sidled up, you know, like... Like his trousers were too tight, you know, sort of... He said, he said, do you want a ticket? He said, ten pounds, and I'm robbing myself. He said, ten pounds for the best sex show since Stars on Sunday. I said, I said I'm not paying ten pounds to see a load of filth. I said, I can stay at home if I want to say that sort of thing. I said, it's not, it's not a sex show down there. That's the Frankie Howard Variety Show. So he says, well, there's filth and filth. <laughs> I said, listen, Mush, I said, do you realise I'm the Queen of Sheba? He said, you're not. I said, you ask that doorman up there. <laughs> See, I confounded him with logic. I said, besides, I, did, I said, this, this ticket, this ticket is a forgery. I said, this is the worst forgery since the Irish seven-pound note scandal. <laughs> I said, a forgery. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, how many Ks? How many Ks in spectacular? Fool. <laughs> Well, he put two, and he fool knows there's only one. So, well, no. Ah, no. Well, you see, spelling was my forty at school, and reading. Reading and... What's this word? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yes, I sneaked round the side of the theatre. Because I always leave my dressing room window open. It's a habit I got into during my Insta days. Because during the war, you know, you had to be quick off the mark if those troops didn't like you. They had bayonets. <laughs> you soon got the point. You soon... Now, please. Now, please. No, no. Please. I shall fly into a tantrum now, please. Get the tantrum ready. i tell you something. I climbed in through this dressing room window and I hardly got my leg over. The, the window ledge, the window ledge. And I heard this scream. I thought, oh, God, no. Not another groupie. There isn't time. This, this woman said to me, this woman in the dressing room, what are you doing in my dressing room? Your dressing room, I spluttered? Spluttered I did. Splutter, splutter. Am I spraying you with my spluttering? 
Oh, anyway, this woman said, I'm Anita Harris. I'm starring in the Frankie Howard show. So I said, Anita, how nice to see you. I didn't recognize you. You know who I am, don't you? She said, yes, the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> so here she is, the girl with the gall, Anita Harris. Here she is. Thank you, the lovely Anita Harris. Isn't she lovely, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> and you'll be seeing more of Anita later on. She'll be returning with some more numbers. And while we're in the mood for music, it occurred to me that you might like to hear one or two numbers from me of rather a different nature. I sing a wide variety of songs, and tonight I would like to sing... <laughs> John Travolta. <laughs> Can you sing Down by the Old Bull and Bush? Yes. Good, here's the bus fare. <laughs> Don't rush back. 
But don't who's going clap, to introduce the next act? Don't clap, you want money for this. I've told him it's an audition. Well, you carry on. <laughs> but who's going to introduce the next act? Understand this, Sir Lawrence. I make, yes, <laughs> two name dropping in one little paragraph. I make the introductions, you make the tea. Now, be gone. Make the tea, it's you, just not the blue. fair. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely speakist, beautiful speakist. Because I'm more of a singist. Now, shut your faces. <laughs> Wait, please, I will not have. This, you're turning this into a place of amusement. Now, <laughs> now, where was we? Ah, yes. The next act, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the funniest impressionists around at this moment. He is versatile, he is talented, and best of all, he's turned up. <laughs> so without further ado, because we've had quite enough do's to be getting on with, please welcome Aidan J. Harvey. Here we go. Good evening. Good evening. My name, as Frankie said, is Aidan J. Harvey, and I do people. And uh, <laughs> though that is to say, I do impressions of people like, um, well, like uh, Ian Paisley. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> I want us all here tonight to hold our hands together. <laughs> Together and go our separate ways. <laughs> Furthermore, why did God, in his infinite wisdom, give the Arabs the oil and the Irish the potatoes? Well, that's because the Irish had first choice. <laughs> Fantastic, that ended. Hey, uh, I read all about him in the terms. Hey, hey uh, magic, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> did you watch a lot of telly? Uh, uh, Coronation Street? I, I was actually offered a part on Coronation Street as well. And uh, Have you seen Mavis, actually, in the paper shop? Have you seen her? Oh, well, I... But, but, I, but I, I, I don't know it. I mean, I mean, I mean... <laughs> Nothing like her, is it? I'll tell you what, though, I... Uh, imagine, no, no, imagine, now, you, you, you're watching the telly now, and it's 6.45 on a Monday evening, and it's time for, once again... Thank you tremendously, thank you tremendously, my darlings. Welcome to your opportunity, not to wear you the nation van, I want to tell you, really do most sincerely. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Right now, my darlings, who did you, the viewers, vote for last week? It was a close thing. <laughs> In third place, you voted for that wonderful, dynamic, one-legged tap dancer. <laughs> who really went down well. <laughs> In second place... You voted for that wonderful young man who came all the way from Holland who did a wonderful impression of a windmill. <laughs> and you saw him do a good turn. <laughs> but in first place, who did you of yours want to see one small come through that door of opportunity? Let's hear from right now, I mean, don't you want to tell you really? <laughs> Let's hear for here he comes for it's sports night here on Opportunity Knocks with. Brian Clough, my darling. Now, Brian, what, what was one of your big highlights of last season? Well, Hughie, you know, I don't care who it is. I make, I make no exceptions. I say what I say, and I say what, and I mean it. You know, you, Philip had the pleasure of meeting me last year <laughs> at Wembley when I won, the, I won the League Cup for Nottingham Forest. I was talking to the Prince after the game. And he asked me what my aims were. I said, well, I want the England job. And the Queen said, thank God for that. I thought you wanted mine. <laughs> Fantastic. I, we'll, stick, we'll stick with this sport now, and we'll go and join some horse racing commentary with um, Peter O'Sullivan. 
And here we are now at Newmarket for the three o'clock as they're all ready to go for this big race in this afternoon and just going into the stalls there is one of the big favourites and that's Cyril Smith on Slimsier Girl. <laughs> and they're ready now to go for this big one here this afternoon and we're ready now for the off and the off. <laughs> yes, they're off, they're definitely off. I can smell them from here. <laughs> Coming up on the inside now, it's a white sheepskin nose band, and that's Lester Pickett now. Lester Pickett on the rail. Oh, that must have hurt. <laughs> As they race now towards the three full on mark of the first time, now it's James Callahan on Comedy of Errors. And he's holding up General Election. Now, coming up on the outside is another one of the other big favourites now. And there's Venetian Blind now, closing on the leaders now. And as they race now towards the first fence for the first time, it's all neck and neck. Here they come now to the first fence. <laughs> and all the others have down that first fence as they race now out towards the country. It's over the Michael O. But no, it's not. It's Pat O'Hare. And it's Jock to Jock. I love the kids' programmes to be on the telly. <laughs> Especially that one with that nutcase on, that John Noakes. <laughs> it was magic. Uh, blue piece. <laughs> well, hello, and welcome to Blue Pizza. We are having a bees in buzzing time. We got it. Get down. <laughs> Some fantastic films here right now. In fact, we got some films right now of uh, Leslie Val and me doing some mountaineering. <laughs> Before we show you that, we got some films right now of Yaki Duck Popeye and Olive Oil. A wow! A wow! A wow! What's going on here? No, I ain't your mommy. Miss <laughs> <laughs> <It's> Popeye. <laughs> well, I'll be by you. This will kill you, this. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> feel proper daft when I do that. <laughs> well, never mind. I think after that little jog about, I think I deserve a blue piece of bench. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good night, God bless you. you. Aidan J. Harvey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Well, now it's my chance. <laughs> I've waited for my moment. I'm going to introduce the next guest. I've waited so long, I've planned, how oh, I've planned. I've plotted, I've connived, and I've managed to lock Howell in his dressing room. <laughs> so that I can welcome a wonderful entertainer from Glasgow, one of the finest ticklers of the ivories that fair city has ever produced. And when he isn't teasing elephants, he's playing the piano. Tonight, we couldn't get an elephant, so here he is playing instead. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill McGuffey.
Well, that was, of course, Bill McGuffey, the Liberace of the London Scottish First Fifteen. <laughs> Didn't I say that nicely? Let me, let, me, let, let me tell you something. That conniving announcer thought he'd lock me in my dressing room. <laughs> Little does he know that I'm, in fact, dressing in Anita Harris's room. <laughs> to protect her from the likes of him. I wonder where she's dressing. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, be frank, the agony colour of the air. Now, we all have little things tucked away that nobody knows about. <laughs> little niggling things that niggle us all day long, and all night long too sometimes. Well, this, please, I must have shush, please. God, will this never end? Now, we've asked certain members of the studio audience to write down questions about their little personal problems. So, could we have the first personal problem, please? Hello, Alec Buchanan, Darlington. Uh, wait a minute, uh, who? Alec? <laughs> Buchanan. Buchanan, OK, yes. Darlington. Okay. Yes. Uh, we've got a perfectly adequate family saloon car, but my wife is constantly nagging me about getting a bigger one. I see. Well... <laughs> Set your heart at rest, my friend. It's been proven time and time again that size makes no difference. <laughs> there is such a... Don't go. I haven't finished yet. There's such a thing as quality. You see, it's performance that counts, Alec. A friend of mine has a mini. <laughs> his, his wife is quite satisfied. He has a bit of ignition trouble, but don't, don't we all? It's not the size that counts, my friend, it's how big it is now. <laughs> question two. You can use that mic, darling. Right, there we go. Question two, please. Hello, Marion from Slough. Marion, yes. My husband won't do anything in the garden. Well, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not what would well, the neighbours think, Marion, from Slough? It's an absolute mess, and the neighbours are complaining about the weed. Well, there's no way to, no way to talk about your husband. Now, look, I, I sympathise with the man. Why should he slave away just because he hasn't got prize hollyhocks? No. <laughs> please, please. Now, uh, next question, please. Hello, I'm Barbara from Dunfermline. From Dunfermline. Barbara, welcome. Yes. Uh, my problem is that although I like to dress well and look attractive, and you do. I, I'm fed up with being ogled at by men and having my bottom pinched on buses and trains. Is there a solution? Uh, <laughs> I can see you have two interesting points there. <laughs> now you're getting ogled on the upper deck and pinched on the underground. <laughs> I suggest you get your own car. Have a word with the Alec afterwards. I'm sure he would give you his if he got his hands on a larger model. <laughs> Next question, please. Hello, Mrs. McLennan of Putney. Putney, yes. As a housewife, I'm constantly being pestered by salesmen banging on my door. Salesmen banging on your door, yes, dear. Is there any way of dealing with these people politely? Well, pester bar salesmen banging. On your door. On her door. <laughs> well, if I were you, dear, I'd start by taking the door off, and that'll confuse you. <laughs> Don't go on, finish it, dear. <laughs> that's good, because mine's a salesman. I'm a sucker for them, really, because encyclopedias, all knowledge, all can knowledge is a very, is a wonderful thing. I found out the other day it's spelt with a K. <laughs> can knowledge. Mind you, I'm not as clever as I was, dear. I used to know, I used to know the dates of the 1418 war and <laughs> how many symphonies Beethoven wrote before his fifth, and, of course, <laughs> it was 1066. Oh, thank you, the orchestras. <laughs> One can read music. 1066. <laughs> he's, not, he's not with us tonight, mind you, that <laughs> 1066, Battle of Hastings, 55 BC, invasion of Britain, 52 B, Highbury to Lewisham every 12 minutes. <laughs> and all that. It's a long question. Next question, please. John McGonagall, Achter Machte. Do you mind not dribbling? You're dribbling the other. Achter 
Yes. I, I'm a stranger to London. I gathered. Can you tell me what the best places to eat in London are? Yes, restaurants. <laughs> oh, no. I would have thought that, restaurants. Personally, I recommend a quick Italian. And if you want to eat afterwards... <laughs> then you can't beat a good Chinese, number six, number 12, number 14, and get off of the traffic lights. <laughs> number bus gag. Next, please. My name is Len Jackson, yes. and I want to know if you're going to be long, because I'm waiting to introduce the Max Harris Orchestra. Oh, God. Now, he's a, he's a problem I can't solve. <laughs> Nor can his wife. Go on, then. Earn your four pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the Max Harris Orchestra. Well done. Well done. course was Max Harris versus the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is, well, how can I put it? He's very big in the clubs. Well, he's very big everywhere, actually, I mean. But if you will pay attention, you'll like him. He's marvellous. Here he is, George Roper. Here he is. Thank you. Nice to be in London again, really is. And I've been walking around shoplifting. <laughs> Very heavy, some of them shops. <laughs> Especially the sex shops. We don't have sex shops in Lancashire, do we? Do you know those filthy books? Have you seen the sex shops? I was there all day looking through these books. Disgusting, is it? <laughs> Mind you, one bloke in Liverpool last week, he said to his wife, let's make love like the cats do. He fell off the roof and broke his leg. <laughs> Look at this lot here, we should have had a jukebox. <laughs> I was in Bradford the other week, it's very colourful, you know. Do you know, I felt like a spot on a domino. <laughs> in some places in Bradford, you have to wait till it snows to count the population. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. <laughs> Gotta keep it clean tonight, all clean gags, because I'm not Bernard Manning, you know. He's a hell of a size, that. You know, he's in Liverpool this week. They're cleaning the Mersey Tunnel out and they're pulling him through. <laughs> yes, right. He makes that Conan Crompton look like a dipstick. 
because I, I come from Liverpool, of course. You see, I've, I've had elocution lessons. That's where a bloke said to his mate, he said, my dog died with flu. He said, dogs don't die with flu. He said, a flu under a bus. <laughs> so one bloke went to the railway station, said, I want to return. The fellow said, where to? He said, back here. Where do you think? <laughs> docker outside the dock gates in Liverpool doubled up in pain and he's lying on the floor and a policeman stood there and this bloke said what's the matter with that docker the policeman said he wants to go to the toilet he said why doesn't he go he said it's his dinner hour <laughs> that's a northern sense of humor <laughs> somebody from north there Where... oh it's a lovely place actually when I was a kid, I used to walk down a dock road and a docker came out the dock gates with a bale of cotton on his shoulder. And the policeman said, what are you doing? He said, I've got the earache. <laughs> hey, do you remember the old one about the dockers walking along and one said, you know what I'm going to do when I get home? And the other docker said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to nip in the house and I'm going to rip the wife's knickers off. He said, oh, yeah. He said, the elastic's killing me. <laughs> we must have heard all these old jokes before, haven't we? <laughs> like in Cheshire, that's where we live, actually. My wife comes from Cheshire. They, they're very posh there. You, you must know this, the Cheshire set. They manicure the fish fingers. <laughs> it's true. They have wife swapping in Cheshire. During the night, one of the lads says, Oh, I like the swapping. And the other fellow said, I wonder how the girls are getting on. <laughs> <laughs> one more gag before I go. Hey, you're a smashing audience. You know, I always thought London people were as common as muck, but you're wonderful people. <laughs> One more before I go, I must tell you this one because I only heard it the other day. A bloke went to the doctors and he, he said, I'm undernourished. The doctor said, What have you been eating? He said, Well, I like billiard balls. <laughs> he said, Billiard balls? He said, Yes. He said, Do you mean you eat them? Oh, he said, I love them. He said, What do you mean? He said, The black ones I like. <laughs> uh, occasional pink. But I love the red ones. I go, I go mad about the red ones. The doctor said, no wonder you're undernourished. He said, why? He said, you're not eating enough greens. <laughs> that, of course, was George Roper. It was marvellous. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me see this for a second. Just a tick. You know, very, very often people go around collecting for charity and giving things away, and very kind-hearted people. And the other day, I had this woman at the door saying she was collecting money for destitute old men. Now, <laughs> after I told her I worked for the BBC, <laughs> she gave me a fiver. And, um, <laughs> yesterday night, I was doing a handstand... <laughs> And why not? And I just got my feet up when there was this knock on the door. <coughs> not today, thank you. I've got an encyclopedia. I'm not interested in politics. My drains do not need looking at. And I don't want life insurance. And hello. <laughs> hello, Frank. If it's not Anita Harris. <laughs> if it's not Anita Harris, God knows who it is. <laughs> Anita! <laughs> Nita, they're supposed to laugh, dear, not you. Nita! I didn't know. Oh, she's a terrible actress. Nita! Anita! Sir! Come over here, girl. I didn't know you... Oh, <laughs> shit, please. I didn't know you lived near here. Yes, just round the bend. I won't say it. I won't say it. But I'm going to have to move soon if the new road goes ahead. New road? Mm. What new road? Well, haven't you heard? No. The new motorway. Oh. It's due to come right down the middle of the street. Oh, dear. You know what that means. Yes. It means my cars is in the fast lane. <laughs> oh, so, so 
They'll knock all the houses down. They can't let the swine. The swine. The Howards have lived in this house since the turn of the month. Exactly. And... <laughs> well, let them laugh, dear. Give them a chance. <laughs> turn of the month. All right, then. Please yourselves. <laughs> now, I am getting up a petition. Oh, that could be nasty, you know. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Will you sign? Are you certain they're knocking all the houses down? Well, originally, the road was going through the gardens. Yeah. But we made them change the plans. Ah. Now it's going through the kitchens. That's all right. <laughs> I live on the third floor. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a flyover. Oh, damn. <laughs> well, I suppose they'll pay compensation. Mm. Not that the money's that important, oh, you I understand. Oh, of course I understand. I guess that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be working for the BBC. <laughs> but that's no reason not to give Frank... A preview of your repertoire. The lovely Anita Harris is going to give us some exciting numbers. 34, 23, 35. But not necessarily in that order. I'd keep it to myself if I could, so count yourselves lucky. Miss Anita Harris! Now a song written by Nat King Cole, his answer to the M1 Route 66. <laughs> Ever 
have a plan to motor west Take the highway, that's the byway, that's the best Get your kicks on Route 66 Well, it winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way Get your kicks on Route 66 Well, you go to St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri Oklahoma City is mighty pretty You'll see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico Flagstaff, Arizona, don't forget Winona King, Man, Boston, San Bernardino Won't you get hit to this timely tip When you take that California trip Get your kicks on Route 66 The orchestra Of course, that was Anita Harris, who just finished warbling and covered me with lipstick. Never mind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to address you tonight on a matter of grave concern to our nation. Now, have you noticed everything's going up? <laughs> please, listen, ple please. Now, I must have shoes. I must really... Now, be shushless. <laughs> now, you must have noticed your bill's mounting. And even excluding Bill. <laughs> this inflation is dreadful. This inflation is terrible. Have any of you ever had your chattels seized? <laughs> he has, I can tell by his high voice. <laughs> How when was it? Last, what's the day? That's right. Well, you're right, no, last Tuesday, that's right. Well, no, well, this letter from the tax people, through my letterbox, it, it plopped. I went all quivering and ashen. <gasps> quivering and ashen! <laughs> Nobody goes to sleep while I'm on, you just try. <laughs> this letter said, Dear Mr. Howard, Howard, with a nail, I thought that's a nice start. <laughs> yes. Dear Mr. Howard, if you don't pay the sum due by the date shown, we shall be forced to seize your chattels. <laughs> I was beside myself, beside myself. I was what the, I was, I was, you see, what, what do they economists call that word? Skint, that's it. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, ends were not being made to meet, one unto another, and then, brethren, salvation, amen. <laughs> All together, amen. This place, this place is like a crypt, isn't it? Let's find... <laughs> this phone rang, and this strange voice, very high-pitched. It was a man, at least I thought it was a man. He said, uh, do you like crumble bread, Mr. Hard? Crumble bread? I thought, oh, God, that's all I need now, market research. <laughs> so I said, no, I hate crumble bread. I like bread that stays in one piece and doesn't fall apart when you're eating sandwiches in bed. Well, I mean, the crumbs, they get down, you know, ooh, <laughs> 
He said, that, that's a shame, Mr. Howard. He said, we wanted you to do a commercial. I said, oh, I said hold on, no. I said, I beg your pardon, yes. You want Mr. Francis Howard, don't you? Yes. You see, because I'm quick in a crisis. <laughs> Especially a money crisis. So I said, um, Francis Howard, at your service. I said, do I understand you desire me to endorse your superb product? He said, if you can make it tomorrow, ducky. <laughs> So I said, right, Mush, I'll be there. Because <laughs> I wasn't taking any chances. Well, it was a strange director. Very floral. You know what I mean, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> well, you're lucky then. <laughs> he said, um, my name's Fawcett and Strother, but she said, do call me F.A. <laughs> so I thought, how sweet. <laughs> He said, uh, we want you to show the people that crumble means freedom, uh, Frankie baby. <laughs> oh, but the baby, I mean, to a grown man in his mid-thirties. Shut your faces! <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> so I thought, well, anyway, he took me outside and he showed me this huge balloon in this field. A balloon. So I thought to myself, you aren't getting me up in the air in that mush. He was, no, he could see I was distraught. He could see I was distraught, not, not that trot, distraught. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> help us, I'm flogging myself to death here. <laughs> so this, this director said, don't get your girdle in a twist, lovey. So I thought to myself, how does he know I'm wearing one? <laughs> Well, you have to look your best for these commercials. I mean, competing with all those young studs. So, I scrambled into this basket, and he passed me all these crumble loaves. When I say action, I want you to show the camera all you can hold in your two hands. <laughs> he said, I beg your pardon. He said, give him a squeeze. He said, shut, wait a minute. Right lot here tonight. God help us. <laughs> so he says, show how soft and white they are. I said... <laughs> so I stood there flexing me baps. <laughs> then this director, he turned to this cameraman and he said, this director said, he turned to the camera and he said, he said, it's no good, the basket's drooping. <laughs> well, it's been a very long morning, I say. <laughs> So he decided to hoist it up, the balloon, higher. See? Oh, I know, I was quivering and ashen. I was quivering and ashen again. And you'd have been the same. How would you fancy hanging up in midair with just a bag of gas to hold you up? <laughs> he said, don't worry, lovey. Tristan's holding on to the rope. <laughs> so I looked down and said, does Tristan have to eat his sandwiches now? <laughs> But this director couldn't hear me, so I waved, you see, to attract his attention, and would you believe it? Tristan the fool, he waved back. Yes! <laughs> I was gone with the wind. <laughs> I, I, I said, help, help, and this director said, hang on to your ballast. I couldn't find the damn thing. I, well, I couldn't find the ballast to hang on to. I looked everywhere and I could, I could, I could hear this. There was a faint shout from way down below, miles away. Oh, blah, blah, blah. So I said, Baden, blah, 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 blah. What? He said, Mind that church spire. <laughs> Too late, I was pierced. <laughs> I was pierced. <laughs> Pss. Pss. <laughs> I was sinking faster than the pound. Pss. What can I do? What can I do? Call the gas board? <laughs> it take so long to come out. Psss. It was louder than that. <laughs> Russell community persisting. <laughs> He's as persist as a newt. I tell you. <laughs> Suddenly, there was this almighty jerk. I think he's here tonight. <laughs> I was dangling, my rigging caught on this tower block. And if, if, if any of you have ever dangled by the rigging, you'll know what I'm talking about. I tapped on this window. So I saw this window there with my French stick. 
And this woman opened it. This woman. And she said, Peeping Tom! Peeping Tom! I said, I'm dangling! She said, Well, Peeping Dangler! I didn't know it was her bathroom. How the devil did I know it was her bathroom? I said, oh, oh, help me, I'm in trouble. And the bloom was swaying. And so I showed her my bread. <laughs> she said, don't you try to kid me, I'm not stupid, she said. The baker delivers on Thursdays. <laughs> I was desperate, I was in a terrible state. I was sort of hanging on to her balcony, you see, and cos she... I said, oh, pity, pity poor Francis. And so she dragged me over the railings, you see, into her room, a little living room, and I was standing there on the lino, all quivering and ashen. Again, no, can you imagine quivering and ashen? I must have been, oh, for a long time, quivering and ashen. Quiv I'm not boring you, am I? By any <laughs> no, I got that feeling. Well, she said, poor man. Oh, she said, you better lie down. Wrap a nice warm blanket around you. I'll make you some hot, sweet tea. It's good for shock. <laughs> I'll tell you something else that's good for shock. Can, can I tell you first? Don't anticipate. Being prodded in the ribs by a huge truncheon. God help us. I nearly expired there and then. Her old man had crept in. Just my luck. She was married to King Kong. And he joined the police. I said, now look, constable, it's all a mistake. I'm doing a bread commercial. <laughs> he said, right, if you won't tell me, I'll get it from Delors. I thought myself fancy at a time like this. <laughs> you wouldn't think he'd be in the mood. He dragged his poor soul into the bedroom. She was sobbing and she was quivering and asking. <laughs> what is catching? <laughs> The divorce case comes up next month. <laughs> I'm the other man. Yes, ye may titter. Titter ye may. The divorce. But where is Francis going to get a liar? I mean, a lawyer. <laughs> I have no money. Never mind! <laughs> the Howard is never defeated. Now, so are those tourists I mentioned earlier still here? Good. Now, you all know about Trafalgar Square, don't you? Now, to feed the pigeons... What do you need? What do you need? I'll tell you what you need. Howard's Pigeon Pieces. Made with genuine crumble bread. Now, you can get them from my stand in the foyer on the way out. And now for McHugh, ladies and gentlemen, because the show is nearly over and the kiosky is about to open. First of all, thank you. I must say goodbye for now. Come again and see us again. Thank you for being such a marvellous audience. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> That was the Frankie Howard Variety Show featuring Frankie's special guests Bill McGuffey, Aidan J. Harvey, George Roper, Anita Harris and me. The music was by Max Harris Orchestra and the script was written by Maurice Gran, Lawrence Marks and Rory McGrath with additional material by Peter Gruner. The programme was produced by Richard Wilcox.